Hello everybody, Matt from The Rational Rant. So today's video is going to be about the Fermi Paradox and some possible solutions to this paradox. Now it was proposed by a famous physicist named Enrico Fermi back in the 40s and 50s before he passed away in 1954. Now, I do want to start this video off by saying that this is all hypotheticals. There is no evidence for this, you know, verifiably. But the caveat is that we are dealing with high probabilities here and likelihoods of these events occurring. By any means, take that into account and make sure that you know that there is some logic and some reason behind this discussion. So without further ado, let's dive right in. In a nutshell, the Fermi Paradox states that there are billions of planets in our galaxy alone, and there are hundreds of billions of galaxies in the universe, but we're only going to focus on the Milky Way. So with billions and billions of planets being in our galaxy, the likelihood of Earth-like planets existing is very, very high. Now there has been estimated to be about a million Earth-like planets within our galaxy. And this is just an estimate, but this is also throughout the formation of our galaxy as well. Because obviously with the Big Bang happening around 14 billion years ago, and our galaxy only becoming habitable probably about 12 to 11 billion years ago. But if you look at that timeline, you see that the room for an evolution of a sentient spacefaring species is quite large because we're literally talking about billions of years and concurrent with our evolution and our technological advancement, the amount of time that we've put into that is quite minuscule. The Fermi paradox is basically saying that we have all these Earth-like planets in our galaxy but why aren't we able to make contact with other species? Why haven't we seen aliens? And that is the heart of this paradox. One concept that I want to introduce in order to try and give you guys some light on a possible solution is something called the Kardashev scale. This scale was proposed by Nikolai Kardashev. He was a Soviet astronomer in 1964. And the Kardashev scale, while there are many variations, the one that he originally proposed was that there are three methods of energy consumption for, you could say, a sentient species that exists on a planet. The three tiers involve certain levels of energy consumption. So tier number one is the ability of a species to efficiently and fully utilize the amount of energy that they have on their planet sustainably. So basically, they're able to power their entire civilization without destroying their home planet. A tier two is a sentient species that has gone more into the spacefaring side of things and is able to harvest the energy of their entire solar system. One technology that has been hypothesized is the Dyson Sphere, and that would be a good kind of barometer for that kind of energy consumption. So they're able to power their entire civilization by harnessing the energy generated within their solar system. Now a Tier 3 is a civilization that has definitely advanced in terms of spacefaring capabilities, and is able to harvest the energy of their entire galaxy. At the center of every galaxy is a super, super massive black hole. If you are able to harvest the energy that this creates, that it would be immense. That would be, I wouldn't say it'd be an unlimited source of power, but it would be almost as close as you could get. And that would kind of be the concept behind a tier 3 civilization. They're able to easily travel throughout the galaxy and they're able to harvest, you know, once again, all the energy to meet their energy needs. Now, to connect this with the Fermi Paradox, we as humans on the planet Earth are about a 0.6 to a 0.7 on this scale. 
So we haven't fully been able to utilize all of the energy available on our planet in an efficient and sustainable manner. So we haven't reached that tier one stage yet. But when we do, I think the door for meeting and being introduced to other sentient species begins to open. Because if you look at it from the possible logic of a sentient species that is way more technologically advanced than us and is in a, you could say, a much better place uh, sustainability-wise, they would look at what we're doing as child's play and it would almost be a test to see if we are able to steer ourselves from inevitable distinct, uh, extinction that we have caused ourselves or if we're able to go down another path where we can be sustainable and be more efficient in our energy harvesting methods to where we would be able to sustainably live on our planet. And I feel like that would be a test to where it would open up the door for someone who has the ability to travel throughout the galaxy to even spend the time to introduce and try and bridge that gap between the species. So I think once we reach that point of tier one, I mean, even pushing into tier two, it would seem more likely and more, more probable that we would meet those other species. Another thing is that when we do reach that point, our technological advancement will be able to also help us in that effort. So we'll have better communication technologies and better methods of trying to reach out to these civilizations if they haven't already reached out to us. So I believe once we reach that point, we will be in a much better position to A, be able to bridge that interspecies gap without everyone going crazy because you know obviously the state we're in politically you know geopolitically and just how the earth is running right now it would not be a very smart thing to have a species that is at that point to just show up and you know throw everybody in a fits because that would not allow that test to continue and they would have interrupted the advancement and the you know the progression of our species so with that being said this is all once again within the realm of hypothetical because we just don't know we haven't met aliens we haven't seen them we don't have evidence all we are basing this off of is math and probabilities and when you look at it it's going to be likely. Maybe within our lifetimes, if we're lucky, we might reach tier one, but I believe that we're still going to have to wait a little bit even to think about going towards a tier two and being a little bit more open about interspecies contact. So I, I think that is a possible solution. We just have to shift our energy needs and we need to prioritize science and technology and efficiency when it comes to the way that we run our planet and when we do so and when we solve a lot of our global ills and we prove to other species that might be observing us that we are ready for you know such contact and such introduction i feel like it would much likely uh much more likely happen in the long term I think that's a solution, and if we push towards it, it's only going to help to benefit us in the future. But thank you guys so much for joining. Make sure to share, subscribe, and like, and remember, stay rational.